Hey everyone, Tactics here with my second last Season 4 Refresher Guide, where in this video I'll be discussing Brackenhide Hollow, going through all of the important boss and trash abilities that you should be aware of, as well as some changes the dungeon has seen on the PTR. If you're interested in seeing a full list of all of the abilities in the dungeon, or a pug-friendly route to get the season started, be sure to check out my Season 4 Ability Spreadsheet, my pug-friendly route video, or my written guides in collaboration with Method, all of which are linked down in the description below. Otherwise, let's get into it with a brief mention of the alchemy profession bonus in this key. Now, throughout the dungeon, you'll find cauldrons spread out that alchemists with at least 25 Dragon Isles skill can interact with in order to open them up. When this is done, anyone can now interact with this cauldron, and it gives them a five-minute buff in cleansed rot. This gives you an extra action button that, when used, will clear a disease effect on yourself. Now, this buff itself is one-time use, so you use that extra action button once, and it's gone. However, the cauldron is not so players can continuously go back to cauldrons to be able to use this self disease cleanse which is specifically quite useful in some areas after the first boss when there's a lot of diseases going out from the pack so that's something to keep in mind there if you can tank near one of those cauldrons it can be very very useful if you want exact locations of any of these cauldrons i've marked them in the mdt route that i give out in my pug root video so make sure you check that out from here, we have the dangerous trash at the start of the dungeon, which will all be guarding cages of Tuscar, of which you need to free five of in order to actually spawn the first boss. In terms of stops, claw fighters are the important one here. They have vicious claw mangle. This causes them to fixate a random player, and this can be quite scary, so make sure you're using a CC to stop this cast from going off. Bracken War Scourges are a big mob in this area with a single important kick in Hideous Cackle. This is a big fear, and being feared with the high mob density in this area is quite bad. You're likely going to butt pull something, so make sure you always have a kick for this Lieutenant mob. This mob also has an Enrage effect in Rage Storm. This is essentially just a Blade Storm effect that you can soothe off. So if you have one, great. If not, it actually isn't the end of the world. You can just avoid this circle. It's, it's quite easy to avoid. Just tanks be aware. It will slowly move towards you. In terms of casters in this area, the Decay Speaker has an important cast in Withering Burst. This targets a random player, deals a four-yard AoE around them, and applies the Withering Disease to them. This is a nasty disease you'll encounter in a few different areas throughout this dungeon, so it's quite important to remember it. It's just 25 seconds long, and it also reduces your haste and move speed at the same time. So having a disease removal or having access to one of those alchemy pots very, very useful when you're fighting these mobs, but in general, you just want to make sure you kick that withering burst. The mystics in this area only have a single cast in earth bolt, but this is quite dangerous because it's just a random target spam cast. So you want to dump any extra kicks you have that aren't assigned to a single decay speaker or a single war scourge into these mystics. Now, after freeing five Tuscar prisoners, you'll be able to take on Hack Claw and her warband, which is a three boss encounter where each of the bosses has several abilities to be aware of. Trick Totem will be your priority target as they just spam cast Earth Bolt similar to those Mystics at random players, and it can be quite dangerous here if this overlaps with any other ability, so it's best to just get this out of the fight ASAP, especially if you're doing a pug group and you're not sure how many kicks are actually going to go off. They also have a heal cast as well, but if you have a purge in your group, you can just remove this buff as soon as it goes out and continue to use kicks on the Earth Bolt. If you don't have a purge, then you have to kick that heal. Whenever any member of the Warband reaches 15% HP, she will use Blood Frenzy, so be aware when that happens, you're going to be taking some extra damage. Gash Tooth is the source of the most unavoidable damage on this fight. Gash Frenzy is a large portion of that. This does five random target hits, applying a stacking bleed to any one hit that lasts 15 seconds. That is a shorter duration now, by the way. This is also removed if they are healed above 90%. HP, so healers, you can kind of prioritize these targets and get rid of those dots. Lead cleanses also work here. Gash Tooth will also occasionally focus in on a single player with marked for butchery, and this deals very heavy damage for four seconds. So use a defensive here if it targets you, or if you have a combat drop like Vanish, like uh, Shadow Meld, that kind of thing, you can use this as well to stop this channel. For tanks, rear hack claw cleaves with all of her attacks, so make sure you point her away from your group. She will also occasionally use a series of blade storm attacks, fixating a player, then fixating a new player, and continuously moving back and forth between your fixate targets there. So be sure you are avoiding the circle and you're running away for the fixate target, even if you are melee. Every so often, the bosses will team up and do a combo on your group with Trick Totem incapacitating the healer via Hex Trick Totem. 
Gash Tooth putting a magic blind on your tank via decayed senses, and Rira targeting a random player with Savage Charge. To survive this combo, you need to kill the totem, CCing the healer, have the healer use a magic to spell on your tank, and then have your tank stand in the path of the charge. This can be made a little bit easier if you have a DPS priest or warlock in your group, as they can use a magic to spell on the tank, which basically eliminates the DPS check of this combo. Outside of that, healers, you just want to, in general, keep players as high health as possible as they'll gain a stacking predatory instincts buff. Now 5% per stack down from 10 for each 10% total health missing from players. So the healthier players are, the less damage the bosses will do. Moving on here, I'm going to again recommend you move right past the first boss. A lot of the trash on the left side has actually been reworked and made a bit easier, but I still think the right side is just going to be more efficient both time-wise and difficulty-wise for you to take on. Initially, you'll face a bunch of infected lashers, and these guys are also spawned throughout this area, and they have an important ability called bleeding. It's just a stacking bleed that goes on a random target, and this is important because there is going to be a lot of lashers in this area, so you really want to monitor your stacks of this debuff and potentially prioritize healing on players that get the higher stacks. Bleed cleanses again. Great for this area. If you get to really high stacks, defensives need to be used. If you get to really high stacks, just be aware of where you're at. Decayed Elders have a single interrupt in this area in Decaying Root. You can also uh, stop this with ACC or dispel it with either a Magic Dispel or any kind of Root Break as well. It's a nasty dot and of course it does root you in place. So if it does go out, be very, very careful and try and dispel it as quickly as you can. Wilted Oaks have their Necrotic Breath. This has changed as it is now no longer interruptible. So you have to make sure you are avoiding this random target breath it can be a little bit hard to see the animation so just do your best range i just recommend staying away from this mob as the frontal is only 15 yards so if you're standing you know 20 30 yards away from this mob you don't need to worry about moving when the breath goes out but melee just be aware keep an eye on this breath if anyone does get hit and they don't get one shot you can use a disease dispel to remove the dot it applies Fetid Rot Singers are the most important mob in this area, and they have Summon Totem. This drops down a Decay Totem on the ground, and this will just apply that Withering Disease Dot I mentioned earlier to the entire group every 10 seconds for a minute. This can be quite scary, and this is where I recommend, if you can, tank near one of those Alchemy Pots that, again, are noted in the MDT route, as this can help you if one of these Withering Casts ever does go off. The high-key strat is actually to ignore these totems and just constantly cleanse yourself to conserve damage, but for pug groups, I just recommend killing this totem and just moving forward with your life. Outside of that, the Fetid Rot Singer will also use Burst of Decay on the tank as they circle around them, so just make sure it gets kicked here because the hit is also quite hard and there's not a ton of other kicks in this area after moving through the plagued area you'll find the second boss tree mouth who has a couple frontal attacks to be aware of the first is the tank targeted vine whip which also has a knockback attached to it so make sure this is pointed away from your group and also don't get knocked so far out of the arena that it resets the boss the other frontal is the random target decay spray which is a pretty short frontal so ranged if you're standing again like 30 yards from the boss you don't really need to worry about it but melee be aware and sidestep this if you need to this frontal will also spawn a few decaying slime mobs that takes will want to pick up, and you'll want to also rotate through AoE stops on their gushing ooze cast just to avoid that party damage. Outside of that, the boss will sometimes cast grasping vines, pulling all players in and then consuming anyone in the circle. You want to make sure one person always does actually get consumed because otherwise the boss will enrage. Now, when someone does get consumed, they basically just are eaten by the boss. They can't move and they're taking ticking damage. And at the same time, the boss gains an absorb shield. Once you break that absorb shield, the player gets spat out and they also gain the partially digested debuff, which basically just means you have to alternate who is getting consumed each time. Note that you can also use an immunity when you're inside the boss being consumed to break yourself out. Things like cloak and bubble work really, really well here. And that also removes the absorb shield, so it saves you a bit of damage as well. Moving past this boss, there's not a ton of new trash towards the third boss of the dungeon, but I do want to talk about Stink Breath briefly here because this mini boss did see a pretty significant nerf that makes it playable. Uh, the one thing is that the actual Stink Breath, the ability the boss is named after, it, it is now avoidable. So the frontal will lock into place and you can sidestep it. The cast is quite quick, so I do recommend everyone stand in melee range of this mob so you can easily sidestep when the frontal goes out but now it is actually a fully playable mob now after weaving your way through patrols you can take on gut shot across the way here and her hyenas which she summons in pairs throughout the fight these hyenas will attempt to use bounding leap on random players so use a cc to stop this from going off 
They also will occasionally use crippling and bite on random melee players. So make sure you back away from these mobs when this happens to avoid being hit. And again, CCs can be great here. This is an extremely dangerous dot. So if you do get one, use a massive defensive or use a bleed cleanse. For the boss abilities, she will target two random players with ensnaring trap, leaving a circle on the ground that roots and damages anyone who touches it. This does include the hyena companion. So tanks, once you get aggro on the hyenas, you can kind of drag them through these traps to help kill them quickly. But again, just don't hit them yourself. Them being rooted also prevents the bounding leap from successfully casting. So you don't actually need to use a CC to stop it in this scenario. On top of this, the boss will sometimes cast Master's Call, which will free any trapped hyenas and give them a speed boost, so you really want to make sure you interrupt this every time. For her last hyena ability, she will occasionally throw meat at a random player, triggering a feeding frenzy, which enrages any available hyenas and causes them to fixate that target. So when this happens, that player should attempt to kite the hyenas through one of those available traps or use things like knockback stuns or slows to stay away from them for the duration. Outside of that, there is a tank hit in Gutshot, which also has a knockback attached to it. So tanks, just be aware, don't get sent into a trap or even worse, don't get sent off the cliff. From there, there's only a few types of mobs between you and the final boss. Witherlings, Wither Biters, and Wither Slashers. Again, lots of names here, but they all do the same thing. They have the Bloody Bite ability. This ability was removed from the beginning of the dungeon, but it's still present here at the end. And this is just a random melee target hit and stacking bleed, similar to those infected Lashers I talked about before, but now only on melee players. So be aware of this. Be aware of your stack count. Obviously, bleed cleanses are looking to be very good in this dungeon, dwarf racials, that kind of thing. So just use defensives here as needed and these kill these mobs as quickly as you can. The other important mob are the vile rot hexers. These guys put a withering contagion on a random player. This is a 15 second disease dot and 20% damage done reduction that will spread to nearby players. So you want to stay away and also get a disease dispel as quickly as you can. And this cast is often followed up by the siphon decay cast, which will remove any withering contagion from players within 30 yards, but also deal a massive hit of nature damage to them. So again, you really want that withering contagion dot to be gone. And if it isn't gone by the time the Siphon Decay starts to cast, I recommend just outranging this ability so you do not get instantly one shot. Moving through the cave at the end of the dungeon, you'll find the final boss to Catriarch Rathai, which is a very scripted, predictable boss fight. To start, note that anywhere outside of the boss's alcove just does get filled with rot gas, so you have to actually make sure you are in the room here. To take up even more space, the tank targeted choking rot cloud frontal also spawns an orb of gas that just rotates clockwise around the edge of the room, applying stacks of withering rot to anyone it touches. Tanks, you want to make sure you are positioned on the edge of the room and make sure that frontal is facing the outside and then step out of the way before the cast actually completes to avoid getting any stacks. Rot burst totems are the priority targets and they will always spawn on the opposite side of the room as the boss. These totems just spam cast rotting burst, another ability that applies that withering rot dot to players so try and kill it as quickly as possible to prevent it from doing this since this always spawns across from the boss tanks can actually totally control the location of these totems which is important as having it spawn inside one of those choking rot clouds that are rotating around the room can reduce your uptime and mean that you get casts of this rotting burst to go off which you don't want when the boss reaches 100 energy, he'll use Decaying Strength, getting a stacking 5% damage increase per Withering Rot stack absorbed, which is why, again, avoiding stacks is very important. This ability also does a Withered Eruption hit that splashes nearby players, where, again, it scales with the number of Withering Rot stacks as the size increases based on how much was absorbed. So loosely spread here just to avoid cleaving your friends. For positioning on this fight, I recommend tanks point the initial rock cloud frontal into any corner, doesn't matter which, and then from there, you want to move the boss diagonally across the room to the opposite corner, which causes your first totem spawn to be in that initial corner you started in. From there, once you kill that totem, just rotate clockwise one corner around the room, and that will cause your second totem to spawn again diagonal from you, which is going to be behind where the rot cloud has rotated to. So this makes it so that no matter what, your totems are going to spawn in good spots. Other than that, just make sure you are saving damage to kill these totems. And that is this fight and this video. So hopefully you guys found it useful. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like it. As always, big shout out to all my Patreon supporters for making content like this possible. And I'll see everyone in the next video.